Welcome back. Well, I recovered from my snapping turtle incident. And now I have some uh, 44 out 6 brass to uh, trim, deeper, deprime. And uh, then I'm going to size those. Let's see how that goes. So now that I've got a bunch of these uh, cases trimmed back from their 30 out 6 length, I'm going to take my uh, I have a Lee uh, collet, a neck sizing die here, and I'm just going to use that to decap these. It's not going to, uh, it's not going to touch the the case body, so it won't change it at all. I'm just going to go decap all these cases. And um, once I got that, I can go on to the next step. So now all our uh, all our cases are deprimed. I've gone through and uh, I've deburred them. And then chamfered lightly, just taking the burr off. We can't go too far on these because uh, this cartridge is going to headspace on the case mouth, and we want to leave a, a good flat on there. But uh, once I've done that, I need to um, take my die. Now this is um, the the, uh, the Lee neck sizing die, the collet die. And I've taken the collet and the, uh, I've taken all the innards out of it here. You can see it's open and then I've made this expanding stem. And that's going to go, that's going to press into here. And if you can see on this one, just a very, it's got a very slight, it's got a very slight radius still. So it's got that, and then it, there, um, the diameter at the mouth is too small, and therefore the the uh, the ID, the inside diameter, is too small. This is what our uh, our loaded round is going to look like. This is just a dummy to set the dies and and. Uh, what I need to do is need to get this outside diameter up closer to this uh, is it 0.458 or so our maximum based on the uh, the reamer I made is 461 so that's a good fit and then it it stops on that shoulder just inside of there so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to put this, well, I'm going to run, I'm going to run the die down until it touches 
a shell holder and then a little bit more so I got a little bit of you see here you can tell it's it's bottomed out so then I'm gonna lock it down and then when I run this expander in it's going to let's see pick a straighter case it's going to get to about this point and this diameter is a few thou under bullet diameter now well, maybe according well let's see zero my calipers here two to three thou under that's where we want the inside to be and then that's gonna that's gonna expand the outside but um, so when I do that I'm gonna run this in the thread's not quite right I gotta work on that but I'm gonna back this out I'll put my case in, run it up in there, close this press, and I'm going to run this in by hand until I get this resistance and starting to enter into that case. I'm going to go a little bit more, and I'm looking for any bell on there to the point where that goes away so it was curved in like this one I don't know if you can tell very slightly it's it's curved in like this towards the opening I'm trying to remove that right here And that's about it so once I've got that I'm gonna not let this move and I have a, a bullet here of a, of a style I'm in a weight I'll likely load on this I can't I can't really crimp because the heads the uh, the case mouth space uh, head spacing so I can't go to this really, I don't want to go to this crimping groove. I'll go somewhere up here on this uh, on this shank, this full diameter shank between this uh, lube groove and the crimping groove on this one. And if I have some other kind of bullet, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and, and either, well, I'll go deeper if I have to. But anyway, so what I'm going to do here is... I can, now that I know that's starting to enter into the case, that stem is, I can open this up and I'm going to open the press up and this gap here is how I'm going to measure the depth. And I want that that gap from the bottom of the die to the top of the shell holder to be approximately the uh, the amount of sizing I'm looking for. A little bit more. Because I know that bullet's going to go about, it's going to be pushed in about that deep. see that how well they can see that but a little bit more and tighten this ring down and then I can I can run that in there Some little, and I don't know if we can see it now but there's a slight There's a slight ring back here. 
Well, the diameter is a little bit bigger than where we started. Where we started was about about that diameter, and now we're up to four five five, and then the bullet uh, on the inside is going to be about three thaw bigger. So by the time we push that bullet in there, we'll be up around four five eight. That's what we have here. And that should still, that should still fit in here. But anyway, that's, uh, that's that first one. And here we're starting with this one. I'll run this one inside. You know, we've gone up in size. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to uh, expand all these. And then we'll um, I'll turn the stem around and I'll put a slight bell on there to facilitate uh, bullet seating. And I think that'll be the that'll be it for this video. So now that I got them all, um, I got them all expanded to the size I want, to the depth that I want. I'm going to uh, take this stem and turn it around. I suppose I could have put the um, the belling um, portion on the same side, but then I, um, I would be stuck with one depth of uh, case mouth expansion and I really didn't want that I want some friction on uh, on that bullet underneath because um, the only way I got to hold these uh, bullets in this case is with uh, with neck tension so anyway let me take this out of here and if we look close hopefully we can see there's a step right here. It's a ring and a step. And then this diameter before the step is under bullet size. But the diameter beyond the step is right at or above bullet size, depending on whether we're loading uh, um, lead or, or copper jacket. But the way I'm going to set this up, I'm going to put one of these in here and back this lock nut off. And I'm going to screw this stem down in here until it contacts that. Adjust this. Until it contacts that case mouth. I feel a contact that now there's a little bit of a burr on here get rid of the burr on the outside stubborn one All right, so what we want to do here is we want to expand this case mouth so that it has just a very slight bell and it won't shave this bullet or catch and, and uh, crumple the case as we try to seat this. So what we want to do is come in here and uh, see
seat this a little deeper. I can start by uh, taking a measurement here. You see here, it's gone up from, most of these cases are gonna be pretty much in this range after we expand the, uh, the inside. And then after we bell them, we're gonna they're gonna be a little bit bigger like that. We don't want to go too big that it doesn't fit into this um, this uh, case end of the or the case mouth end of the uh, the gauge I have here from the, from the reamer I made. We want that to freely go into the the chamber and then stop on that shoulder so we don't want this to be too big but we don't want it to shave the bullet so we're gonna you see it's a little closer i can go a little bit more and if you look real carefully i can feel a little bit a little bit of a bell starting and you see the diameter is a little bit bigger now and then I'll check that a little bit make sure it fits here still I want to, I don't want to have to um, to do another step to these if I don't have to so bit of a burr. But this seems, you know, goes in there. You barely want to, you don't want to work it. That's the other thing. If you work it too much, if you flare it out too much, and then you have to bring it back in, maybe with a collet, something like a a collet crimp would work on this because it could squeeze the mouth into the side. Or uh, I could even put a crimp back and, and crimp sort of into this loop groove if I can locate that and I can crimp into there. But we want to keep this mouth from being roll crimped in. We don't want that. And a revolver with a, or anything loaded that's that's got an actual rim, it doesn't matter, but on this rimless case, that's what we're stuck with. So, you see a little bit more, you can see it, you can feel it, and you can measure it. You see we're around 460. It still goes in there, but that's where I'm gonna stop. So now once that's set, I can put this one in, run it there, and I can lock this down and uh, at this point, this is where my um, trim length come, becomes critical because if they're all the same length, I'm going to get about the same result on this on this uh, this belling step. So I'm going to go through and bell all these, and that will be um, other than uh, some maybe some cleaning and. Uh, I might wash them in some alcohol or acetone, something like that. But other than that, they'll be pretty much all in, in checking length. So that's what I'm shooting for is my max. That's going to be my max, I think, or where I'm going to hit. Uh, well, let's see. That'll be my trim length and then my chamber. And I still might cut 1.8 zero inches deep or just this side of it and then my trim length will be 1.79 to 1.795 somewhere in there but um, anyway yeah I'll go through go through and uh, bell all these and in the next video I have some of these bullets and I have some, uh, you know, that would use a, a fast a pistol powder, but um, my hunting loads are going to be uh, probably going to be uh, all copper. 
I'm looking at the 265 grain from Lehigh Valley. Um, and I have some, uh, I have just a whole bunch of um, Ramshot exterminator powder. And it works in, uh, works in 444 and, and 3030, 223 stuff like that so um should be uh um, should be a hotter load out of a rifle or at least a carbine length barrel rather than load this as a long 44 mag I'm, i believe i'm going to load this as a um, 70 percent of um a 444 and use some uh, rifle powder but until the next video thanks for stopping by